Eating Chat. This is Video News. Tuesday at 6.30 via Zoom, we have our prayer meeting again. Really want to encourage you to join us as we gather together via Zoom and we pray. Also, don't forget Ryan Sheffield that we've been linking in with this month as we pray for our streets. If you've not prayed for your street yet, please pray for your street, pray for the streets around them. Register it or let me know and I will register it for you. Let's cover the whole of Sheffield in prayer. As you most likely know, it is Palm Sunday today and our run-up to Easter very much begins today. We've got the Reverend Alistair Cole with us who's going to be sharing the word later. And then also, you probably already had it come up on the church WhatsApp, but every day this week, the Holy Week up until the Saturday, there's going to be a new devotion that comes out. This is from J. John as he talks about the seven words, last words of Jesus. And I hope and pray that will be a blessing to you. They're only five minutes long or so. Please just take time out just to stop and to listen to what J. John has got to share with us. And then on Friday coming up, Friday the 2nd of April at 7 o'clock, online only, we will be having our Good Friday Reflective Service. We'll be having communion, so please make sure you've got the elements that you need for that ready. And we're going to be having a reflective service as we focus on what Jesus did for us. And then of course, you have the Good Friday and then we have the Resurrection Day, the Easter celebration, Sunday the 4th of April. We're going to online only again and we're going to celebrate, we're going to worship, we're going to rejoice that Jesus is alive. That starts at our usual time on Sunday 11am. 11, 11 Please join us. And while we're talking about Easter, can I remind us, it's never been easier to invite friends, family, neighbours along to our services. You just need to send them to the link to the church website, tell them how to connect, tell them what times they need to connect, and let's get people connecting with the Easter good news. We live in a world where we need some good news and the Easter story is all about good news. So tell your friends, tell your families and let's get them connected to our Easter programme. It's going to be a great Easter, lots for us to connect with. Let's give God the glory because Jesus is alive. Also, next week we have our worship service coming out for April and that will land on Sunday, the 4th of April, Easter Sunday at 1 o'clock. We also have a Limitless Kids special Easter, Easter program for them to enjoy. It's excellent, it's really well done. I want to encourage you to connect into that, especially if you've got children. Um, that's going to launch on Thursday at the 1st of April, which gives you the opportunity maybe to show your children through the Good Friday service or the Easter Sunday service. As I say, it's about 30 minutes long, but it is there for you to enjoy. Also, don't forget, after Easter, on Sunday the 11th of April, we have our Vision Sunday and AGM. You are more than welcome to join us. This will be online only again. The AGM will also be online. What we will do is we'll have a shorter service where I spend a bit of time just sharing the vision for this church, where we're up to, and how it's going to look ahead. And then we will just go for a five minute break, up and play for a five minute countdown, really. We can go and get a cup of tea and what have you, and then we will go into the AGM. It's an important Sunday. Please make every effort to be there. If you have any questions you should have received from the financial report, if you've got any questions, please get that in to me by Thursday the 8th of April at the very latest. 
Thank you. And that's our little website at this point. We are isolated, but we are not alone. If you need anything, you know, shopping, picking up, prayer, or just a conversation, please get in touch. Don't forget our website has all the information that you need for everything. Links to our YouTube, links to our sermons, links to what's coming up, the video news, all of it's on the website. Otherwise, take care, keep safe, and may God bless you. Hello, good morning and welcome to Mosbury Ealing Church. It is wonderful to have you with us today on this new spring day. As you can tell, it's raining, so of course it's spring, <laughs> but it's a beautiful spring day. I wonder how many of you missed that extra hour of sleep last night. Well, I've got three hands up here. <laughs> Very much missed that hour's sleep but we enter into spring and today we are on Palm Sunday we are going to start our Easter program as I've already said and Reverend Alistair Cole is with us sharing the word later we're going to worship God we're going to take communion so please have your communion elements ready but we're going to just spend the next few moments worshiping God and as I always say, I want to encourage you to posture yourselves in worship before God. You know, God is everywhere. You know that. That's sort of the basics of Christianity, that God is everywhere, which means he's in your house. He's in your home. He's where you are. So I want to encourage you as, as we go into worship in a moment, remember he's there. Remember he's here your worship. Worship is our sacrifice of our praise and our soul singing to God. And remember he's there. You don't have to be a church to worship. You can do this in your home. And so I encourage you to posture yourself. I encourage you to put those distractions aside. I encourage you to stand if that helps and to raise your hands and to sing out loud to our God who deserves our praise. You know, um, in the book of John, and it's Palm Sunday today, as you know, it, it says this, the next day the great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's cart. They shouted, Hosanna. They praised God. And my encouragement for us today is for us to do the same. So let's pray. Lord, we come before you now. And we say we are here for you. We are here to connect with you. We are here to worship you. We're here to hear your word. We are here, Lord, because we need you. And we love you. And we praise you. And we want to give you all the glory and all the praise and all the honour that is due your name. And Father God, we shout out, Hosanna. We shout out Hosanna. We shout out Hosanna to you now, Lord, Father God. So, Lord, would you hear our praise? Would you hear our worship? Would you hear our praise as we shout Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna?
you, Lord Jesus. We welcome you in our homes. We welcome you in our hearts. We welcome you in our lives as we shout, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hallelujah.
spend a night in his presence. Let the Holy Spirit work. just remind you of those words we just sung. Oh, I'm running to your arms. I'm running to your arms. The riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace. Light of the world forever reign. Hallelujah. Nothing compares to your embrace. We go running to your arms. Maybe you need to do that today. Maybe it's been a long time since you've gone running into God's arms. Maybe it's been a long time since you've truly trusted God in the situations that you are facing. Maybe it's been a short time but you need to get there again. Just really feeling led to say that if you are going through a difficult time, and we, of course we all are going through a difficult time, but I feel like this Sunday I'm just going through really difficult times. Go running to his arms. Go running to his arms. Feel the embrace of his love. Feel the riches of his love. You know, as a child falls, hurts their knee, and go running to a parent, may you embrace that parent. And through the tears, they tell their parents what's happened. Through the sniffles and the pain, they tell their parents where the pain is. You need to do that today. Go running to your father, your God. Open your heart. Tell him. Experience the riches of his love. That will always be enough. Experience his embrace. running to you, Father God. We come running to you, Lord Jesus. We run into your embrace. We run to you. Our Father, we say, Lord, hear our cries. Hear our pain. Hear our hurt. Replace them with the riches of your love. Replace them with an embrace, with the comfort and with the love that you give, Lord Jesus. Embrace us today, Lord, we pray. Embrace us today, Lord, we pray. We're going to sing another worship song that's going to lead us into communion, but keep running to him. You need to keep doing business with God. Keep doing business with God. Keep running to him and experiencing his embrace and experiencing his love.
We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own man, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was opposed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And who can speak of his descendants? For he was cut off from the land of the living, for the transgressions of my people he was stricken. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. For he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer, and through the Lord makes his life a guilt offering. He will see his offspring and belong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After the suffering of his soul, he will see the light of the life and be satisfied by his knowledge. My righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death, and was numbered with the transgressions. For he bore the sins of many, and made the intercession for the transgressions. Amen. He took our sins, carried them like his own, so that we could be set free. What a wonderful, wonderful God. Lord, would you forgive us for the times we've got things wrong, the times when we've let you down, we thank you that you've took them already and cast them aside because you love us and we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this communion table. We thank you for the communion elements that we have in our home that as we take them now, we can remember that we are forgiven, we are set free, we are released. And we can know the precious relationship and friendship with you. You made a way. When there seemed to be no way, you became the way, the truth and the life. And we thank you, Jesus. Praise you. The night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he said, eat this, and do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took cup, gave thanks, said, do drink this, do this in remembrance of me. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the time we've had in worship. We thank you, Lord, for the embrace of your arms, the embrace of your love that is also shown in this communion table as well. You are such a good God. And we shout, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. You are welcome here. You are welcome here in our homes and in our lives and in our hearts. Great are you. We pray, Lord, now that you will bless your word to us, that we will hear you, that we will be encouraged and equipped by your word, Lord, as Alistair brings it to us. We thank you, Lord, for him, and we pray, Lord, you will bless him and his ministry, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that it will now be a blessing to us in your precious name. Amen. So we just want to introduce...
Alistair to you. Um, many of you will know him, he's been to the church before. He's a really good friend, real good mentor to me, and it's a pleasure to have him with us today. So be blessed as we hear Reverend Alistair. Good morning to all my friends at uh, Mosferine Church. It's a great privilege to be sharing with you today on this wonderful day, Palm Sunday. And I pray and trust that what we share together today will be a blessing to you. It would be helpful if we could just read a passage of scripture together from the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 21, and I'm reading from verse 1 to 11. Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 to 11. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Death Page at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent his disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. If anyone said anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lonely and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their garments on the road, Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. And God will bless the reading of his inspired word. If my uh, message this morning has a title, it's this. Jesus, Destination, the Cross. Jesus, Destination, the Cross. We affirm that central to the message of the Christian gospel is this great theme of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ and his sufferings for the sin of broken humanity. This is Holy Week and we mark these days leading up to the events of Good Friday and that Jesus has spent three years in public ministry performing tremendous miracles, ministering in the dynamic power of the Holy Spirit, teaching with great authority, confounding people with his great wisdom. But now he comes to the apex of his mission on this week leading up to the events of Calvary. In my devotions this week, as I've been thinking about Easter, I've been reading through some of the chapters in John's Gospel, and we have this recurring phrase, Jesus knowing that his hour had come. And I think in particular of John chapter 12, where the two Greeks desire to see Jesus. And that Jesus came before them and spoke these tremendous words. He said, the hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the prince of this world can be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. That phrase to me is so powerful. Jesus, knowing his hour had come. And I try to think, as I reflect upon the events of Holy Week, what must have been going through the mind of Jesus, knowing full well all that he was to face on Friday. Jesus, knowing his hour had come, knowing this moment was drawing near, whereby Jesus would secure for mankind this great hope of salvation and peace with God. Indeed, on another occasion, uh, Jesus put it very succinctly when he said, I have not come to serve, uh, but to, I have not come to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. And so we have the events uh, that we 
mark today on Palm Sunday. And we have Jesus approaching Jerusalem in preparation for the Passover. And this would have been an amazing scene because the streets and the environs of Jerusalem would have been crowded not only with local population, but pilgrims from the Jewish diaspora. In fact, Josephus, a historian, reckons that the Passover time, the streets and the town and the conurbation of Jerusalem would be literally saturated with thousands of people who were coming to celebrate the feast. And why was there this tremendous excitement? You see, the Orthodox Jews were awaiting the coming of their Messiah. Sadly, they failed to recognize who Jesus was. But the reason why there was this great excitement was because the Messiah was expected to appear at midnight on Passover night. That was the expectation of the Jews as they awaited their long-awaited Messiah, that he would appear midnight on Passover night. And so there was this tremendous fever of expectancy there on the streets of Jerusalem. But Jesus, in preparation for this, gives a specific instruction to his disciples that we have here in Matthew chapter 21. And he talks about the village of Bethpage. And he instructs his disciples to go into the village opposite. And he says, there you will find a donkey tied and the colt with her Loose them and bring them to me, for the Lord has need of them. This was a most amazing episode in the events of that day. Because this request Jesus made to go and procure this donkey was a direct fulfillment of the words of the prophet Zechariah, which he wrote in about BC 487, when Zechariah received revelation of this event. And there in that great prophetic book of Zechariah, we read these words. Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey. Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey. So Jesus, having got the use of this donkey, would make his way towards Jerusalem. And he would ascend the Mount of Olives, climbing over its rugged ascent. And there is a point on the Mount of Olives where reaching a ridge of smooth rock, suddenly the viewer is presented with the great amazing view of the glory of the city of Jerusalem. The whole city bursts into view. And Jesus, as he's approaching the city, and there seeing the thronging crowds of people on the streets, there to greet him, awaiting the coming of their Messiah, with a sense of tremendous fervour and great expectancy. And as Jesus begins to approach the city, they begin to chant these words, which we find written in Psalm 118. Psalm 118 is one of a group of psalms called the Hallel Psalms. But this is what they chanted on that day as Jesus approached the city. Hosanna to the son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now this great phrase was always chanted or always spoken in a city for the entrance of the king. And when the king began to enter a city, these words were chanted antiphonally as the king rode into the city, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But I want to focus my attention just for a few moments on this word, Hosanna. Because the word Hosanna literally means save now. The word Hosanna literally means save now. So as those crowds were chanting those words, Hosanna to the Son of David, little did they realise the portent of what they were crying. They were in fact 
articulating the nature of Christ's ministry. Hosanna to the Son of David, who comes in the name of the Lord. And I'm reminded of that great declaration made by the angel to Joseph in Matthew chapter 1. Uh, speaking of Mary, she shall bring forth a son and call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. This is the very ethos of the Easter message. This is the foundational truth of the, our Christian testimony. He will save his people from their sins. You know, it's very interesting when we come to verse 10 and 11 of this Matthew chapter 21. We read these words that when Jesus came into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? When he came into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? As the people saw this sight of Jesus on that lowly donkey, entering the city, there was a realisation that something special was happening. This was a special event. This was something that possibly would never happen again. The Amplified Bible renders that verse in this way. The city was agitated and trembling with excitement, shaken to its foundations. The city was agitated and trembling with excitement, shaken to its foundations. Now, this phrase, the city was moved, and this word shaken is from which we get the word seismic. And so what, what the author here is trying to, to portray is such was the fervour, such was the excitement, such was the expectancy and the adulation of these crowds that literally the city began to shake as though it had been shaken by an earthquake. And of course Jesus had mixed emotions as he looked upon these crowds. When, for example, you read Luke's account of this event, we read here that Jesus wept over the city. And as Jesus received the adulation of the crowds and looked upon the city, he said these words, If you had known, even you, especially in your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. Jesus, realising that amidst all of the cries of the people, shouting Hosanna, the adulation, Jesus realised there was a sense in which Jerusalem missed its moment of destiny. Jerusalem and that city and the nation of Israel were about to crucify their Messiah. They were about to miss God's time of visitation, which would have calamitous consequences down the road. Because we know, of course, in AD 70, about 40 years later, the Roman general Titus destroyed Jerusalem, ransacking it, raising it to the ground, brutally killing thousands of people. I want to draw this to a close this morning and to posit this thought before you. And this story speaks to us of human frailty and the frailty of human opinion. Here we have these thousands of people on the streets of Jerusalem as they are watching Jesus come into the city shouting Hosanna, shouting hail him regarding him as a king, regarding him as one who is coming in the name of the Lord, that expectancy of the visitation of Messiah. But let me remind you of this, that many of the people on that Palm Sunday that shouted hey of him, a few days later shouted nay of him. Many of the people on that first Palm Sunday, who shouted hail him on the streets of Jerusalem, would shout nail him as Jesus was nailed to that rugged Roman cross on the hill of Calvary. 
My friends, never let us lose sight of the glory of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul, this was the, the very central message of the Gospel that Paul and the Apostles preached. The importance of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul, in writing to the Galatians, he says these words, God forbid that I should glory except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. So, as I draw to a close, as we reflect upon this Palm Sunday, and the events there on the streets of Jerusalem, let us indeed proclaim that Jesus Christ is our Lord, that he is our King, that he is the Messiah, that he is God's Son, that he came to break the power of sin and death, that he came to bring peace with God, that he came to set the captive free, that he came to give us the assurance of sins forgiven. And of course we know also the story doesn't end there, because we know that Jesus destroyed the power of sin and death, and became <clears throat> that he put into operation that wonderful phrase where he says, I am the resurrection and the life. So may God bless you today and through this week as we reflect upon the Easter story in these days ahead. And let us ever be thankful for all that Jesus Christ has procured for us on the cross. He who knew no sin was made sin for us that we may be made the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. May God bless you today. Amen.
worship you, Lord. Our God is greater, our God is stronger, our God is mighty, awesome in power. Hallelujah. Lord, may we, through this week, as Alistair has shared, may we hail you and not nail you. I, I love that sort of little play on words there. And I pray, Father God, that we would be people that hail you this week. And put you as our destination, Lord. Lord, I pray, Lord, Father God, you would bless our week. You would go ahead of us. You'd be with us, help us, protect us. Embrace us. As we continue to shout Hosanna, as we continue to hail you, as we continue to declare that you are our God. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Just really want to thank you for joining us today. If you've if you're new to us, if you are with us for the first time and maybe you have questions, maybe there's things that have been said, please, you can always get in touch. Just go to our website, type in Mosborough Ely Church, Ely, E-L-I-M, and type that into Google or whatever you have, and it will come up and there's a contact page and you can contact us. And we would love to chat to you more about that. Can I just remind everybody that this week, on Tuesday, we've got our prayer meeting at 6.30 by Zoom. And then Friday, Good Friday service, we'll be having a reflective service online only, the same way you've um, connected with this service today, online, 7 o'clock. We'll be taking communion again. We will have songs. We've got, we've got the story. Um, we've, not, not story. We've got what Jesus goes through on Good Friday. And we'll be sharing that. It would be wonderful for you to take time out and to join us. And let's remember what Jesus did for us. And then, of course, we have Easter Sunday. This time next week, online only again. It's 11 a.m. We're going to celebrate. We're going to praise. And we're going to declare that our God is alive. Please join us. Please connect with us. Don't forget we also got devotions this week for the next seven days. First one should already be on the church WhatsApp um, for J. John. Please take time out, five minutes each day, and just be blessed by what J. John brings to us. Continue to WhatsApp, continue to encourage each other. You're not isolated. You're isolated, but we're not alone. Keep in touch. Take care, keep safe, and God bless you.